Hello Intertubers and welcome to another geeky interlude. This one is about uh, the physics of hyperspace. Uh, you know, the fake physics that exists in this game. So, to start with, uh, one number you need to know, 200, uh, that's the hyperspace constant uh, when measured in, in light year tons anyway. Uh, so this is like one of those universal constants like the gravitational constant or the speed of light. It's just the way things work. And it tells you how far you can jump. Maximum jump distance depends on H, it depends on uh, the class of your hyperdrive. In fact it kind of depends on that twice uh, because it's proportional to the square. And it's divided by ship mass, so fairly unsurprisingly bigger drives make you jump further and bigger ships will jump more slowly, so it will jump smaller distances. But of course a bigger ship has room inside it for a bigger hyperdrive, so it mostly evens out. Uh, fuel consumption, this is less important. Basically it's class squared again. Uh, it's, so you know, when you uh, when you build a ship, just just remember you're going to need to set aside space for making the hyperspace for fuel for making the jump. Uh, maximum jump is going to be class squared in tons. Any smaller jump, oh, it just scales proportionally to uh, the class squared. So you know, if you're jumping half your maximum distance, you'll use half as much fuel. Except that it will be rounded up, um, probably because fuel. Like any other cargo, it's traded in whole numbers of tons only, so the game doesn't really know what to do with a fractional ton, so it just throws it away for you. Annoying, but not a lot else, not a lot else they could have done. And they certainly couldn't have had the rounding errors go the other way, or you might find that it's free to jump to a star that's very close, which would be silly. And on a final formula, which is almost never matters, you can substitute in the formula for maximum length, and what you get is a formula for an expression for fuel needed that doesn't depend on class. You see, there's no class in here. No class. So, uh, yeah, all that tells you is um, fuel consumption is independent of class. The cla having a bigger drive might make a jump possible, but if it was possible before, it'll still take the same amount of fuel, although it will be faster. So, here's some examples. Uh, the classic starting example is uh, the Eagle Mark I starting ship weighs in at 25 tons with a class 1 drive. And the range, well, even if you, you can probably remember the range is 8, but if you can't, it's 20, 200 divided by 25. I mean, yeah, times 1 squared. That's not really, times 1 squared. That's not really doing anything here. So, next up, a Viper. This is a a very good second ship. Um, it's one of the first ships that you know, can reasonably fit a class 2 drive inside it. So uh, this time range is going to be uh, 200 times 2 squared, that's 800 divided by 65, so it's going to be more than 10. And in fact 12.3, that's a very good range. Like, I think 8 is barely adequate, 10 is good, 12 is very good. And uh, yeah, I mean, you probably remember that traveling from the Federation to the Empire with an eight light year jump range was a real pain. Like, I had to make a lot of double jumps. I had to make some very bad trading runs because I was traveling from one industrial to another. And it was just annoying. On the other hand, going back with a Viper was really easy. I could, I could pick some great trading routes, didn't have to double jump or do anything silly. And I suspect that's because. If you imagine the galaxy as flat with stars randomly distributed in it, then the number of stars you can jump to is going to be proportional to the square of the range, because essentially the range just would draw out a circle, uh, which might explain why 12 feels so much better than just one and a half times eight. In fact, boxes we also have the z dimension. Maybe it's even like the cube of the. Um, of the range. Anyway, next example, and it's a really annoying example, it's what we call the purple ship problem. So purple ships, oh, ships in this game are colour coded in the scanner. Purple means bigger than 
uh, 25 tons and less than or equal to 50 tons. So the Gecko, therefore, is a purple ship. Uh, a bit on the heavy side for purple ships, weighing in at 45 tons. Although only 34 of that you can, can actually accommodate equipment. The other 11 is the ship's hull. And yeah, you kind of need that to avoid being blown out into space. But that is, that is a bit of a big hull for a ship this size. So, what are we going to put in it? Our first idea, and I think this is what the shipyard puts in it, is a class 1 drive. Um, slight problem with that, the range is absolutely pitiful. 4.44 uh, won't even get it from Salter Barnard Star. Uh, you'll find yourself marooned uh, most <laughs> on most stars in, in my favourite trade routes because there's just you, you can you just can't jump anywhere. It's really really bad. Okay, so if the class one isn't big enough, then how about the class two? I mean that's going to give this ship an amazing range. Um, I'm gonna. I mean, a class 2 is four times better than a class 1, and that gives us a 17 light year range, almost 18, which is fantastic. There's just one small problem, the class 2 is big. Um, we start out with 34 tons, then 25 of that is the drive, 4 of that is the fuel for the drive. Maybe you don't need all of that, I mean, you could get away with 3, maybe 2, but still... What you're left with isn't much. Five. That's pathetic. That's less than the Eagle Mark One. The Eagle Mark One has nine tons left over after after driving fuel. And you know you're gonna want an autopilot so that goes down to four. Then you're gonna want a weapon and a radar mapper, so very quickly you find that you have almost no space to trade with. And there really is no good solution to this problem. You could fit a class two military drive. That'll work. That'll give you the crazy range of 17.7, and it'll give you, I think, 18 tons to trade with instead of 5. That's great. It's just the Class 2 military drive is so expensive that you might as well just buy a Viper instead. And, you know, the purple ships are, you know, bigger eagles, like the Eagle Mark 1, sorry, the Eagle Mark 3, you have a choice between, I think, 6.6 .6 light year jump for a Class 1, or 26 for a class 2 and again the choice is between being unable to jump and being unable to trade so well now we get up to the big ships imperial courier uh, iconic ship but weighs in at 480 tons and it always has a class drive in fact sorry class 5 drive in fact you cannot remove this drive and fit a different one it's integrated into the ship but you probably wouldn't want to because this is kind of the perfect size for a class 5 drive. 10.4 is a, a good distance and the drive doesn't eat up too much space inside the hull. I mean it eats up more than I would like but, but, but I can live with it. And I have to say class 4 would be silly on this ship anyway. You get a jump range of about 6 and class, class 6 yeah, you have almost no space left for trading. It, it, it just has to be the class 5, really. And here's the Gecko again. This, this time a very silly example. The Gecko is the smallest ship that can fit a class 3 drive and 9 tonnes of fuel. If you do that, you'll have exactly one, <laughs> one tonne of space left. So this isn't very practical, but you do get an incredible 40 light year jump range. So, one other thing to be aware of, the other hyperspace constant, which is jump time, uh, seven days or one week, uh, that's for a maximum length jump, of course, if you, if you jump a smaller distance, then, um, then, then the time is proportional, you know, so if you jump half a distance, you'll take three and a half days. And you sometimes, you sometimes need to care about this, mostly it's those military delivery missions where you don't have a lot of time to do the job so that, that's really the only time when you when you care about it normally i don't care about jump time oh i suppose there is one other situation where i care about jump time and that is uh when i'm assassinating somebody because 
if they escape into hyperspace, then I want to be able to follow them and arrive before they do. Yeah, this then is related to uh, jump speed. Speed equals distance over time, which turns out to be, uh, you know, depending on the class, so the bigger, if you fit a bigger hyperdrive, you can jump faster. Not, not, not very exciting, like, normally I only care about that formula. Now, here's a bit of a diversion. The important hyperspace constant is in a really weird unit, distance multiplied by mass. And I can't think of any useful physical quantity that is measured in that unit. Closest I could come was moments of inertia, but those are distance squared times mass. So I'm, I'm really scratching my head on this one. I, I can't think of a physical quantity. I especially can't think of one which has a conservation law attached. However, if we broaden our horizons a little bit, then there might be one. Uh, although, because although there's no physical con physical quantity that's usefully measured in distance mass, there is an economic quantity, uh, which is called various things, but often freight. And essentially, it's a measure of work done by like truckers or you know cargo ships or any transportation vehicle. I mean, I mean, work is in scare quotes, not because truckers are lazy, but because uh, in physics work means something, but this is actually the plain English meaning of the word work. And, and work done by truckers or any transportation worker, usually measured in kilometres, tonnes, which is again distance mass. Uh, it's a measure of how much they transport it multiplied by how far they moved it. And they're actually is a law of conservation of distance mass in here in that if you have a fixed amount of money to pay then you can pay for a certain amount of freight but you know, in various different forms you might be able to transport a small amount of weight a large distance or a large weight a small distance but the freight the product of these things it will be about the same but essentially because you're paying for labor you're paying for trucker hours or whatever well, we we're also paying for stuff like fuel, which again would, would, would be proportional to kilometres times tonnes. So, is hyperspace like a magical guild of space truckers? I mean, kind of. Like, you pay the truckers in fuel, and bigger drives let you pay more, and the payment determines how much freight is moved, which is going to be mass of your ship multiplied by the distance it goes. But don't take that last part too seriously. Now here's the annoying problem. Uh, hyperspace drives themselves are heavy. Uh, they're part of the, uh, of the mass that has to be lugged around. I mean we've already seen uh, 25 tonnes from a class 2 drive can be a real problem. Like It's just too big for some of those intermediate ships. Anyway, these values, you can get them all from the game. Like, just go to, uh, go to a star like Sol, look at, look at the ship dealer, look at the upgrades, and they'll, it'll tell you how heavy all these things are, so you can get that information. And uh, that makes it possible to talk about uh, drive efficiency, which is, roughly speaking, a measure of how far can each drive propel itself. So... Switching to R now. Remember those masses? Up to 60, 80, 150. Yeah, I have these written down off screen. 250. So those are the masses of the hyperspace drives in tons. And if we look at that plot, uh, nothing really exciting there. It looks like a smooth curve uh, that goes up, uh, but that is very deceptive. There are some nasty anomalies here, which um, I need to look at. Hold on.
So, uh, well, I need the notion of actually hyperspacer drive class as well. Classes go from 1 to 8. Except that. Oopsie. <sighs> First mistake. <laughs> Except that the class 8 drive is actually a class 9. So there, that's the uh, hyperspace classes. So uh, now here's a quantity that I would call hyperspace uh, efficiency. Uh, that's a measure of how far the hyperspace drive will, can propel itself plus its fuel. Like this. So we're kind of assuming here that we have a ship around this that's basically just a paper bag, which weighs nothing. So how far is that going to go? Well, 200 times class times class divided by the mass, which in this case is going to be just the mass of the hyperspace drive, plus a full load of fuel. drive efficiency um, so uh, we can see that class 1 is bad class 2 is okay class 3 and 4 both tied actually for the top position at 33 but I really would like a plot here let me try one more time and that it seems has worked let me I've literally lost the plot hold on that's embarrassing. Here it is. And I've done it wrong. Okay. the plot I wanted. It shows drive efficiency, so best drives here with an efficiency of about 33, or 3 and 4. Class 1 is terrible. Uh, also class 7 is pretty bad, and this downward trend does actually reverse for the class 8, probably because the class 8 is secretly a class 9. So yeah, I want to do something similar for the military drive. Uh, There's only six, there's only three of them. Six, twelve, twenty-four. So. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, okay, now I want to plot both of these on the same graph. So. Combined graph, so these are the, the conventional drives and those are the military drives. So can I do any better than that? How about all right, 
labels. Yeah, we need to round these. We'll get a load of crap. So. So that is a plot of hyperspace drive efficiency. Now, as a rule of thumb, uh, I, I would normally like to have a one third of my ship's mass be drive and fuel, one third be all other equipment, and uh, one third be space for trading. Can't quite manage that because there's also the hull, but that's the basic idea. So the class three and four drives would be pretty good. Like I'd get a range of uh, about ten out of those if I built a ship that way. Class 1, though, is pretty bad, because if that was only a third of the ship's mass, then uh, I'd only get a range of about 6, which is pitiful. I mean, that's kind of what you get with the purple ships. The problem is the Class 1 drive is, uh, well, Class 1 drive is the most inefficient in the whole game. The other problem is it's just a huge step up to a Class 2. It's so much heavier than a class one. I mean, the, the, the class one military helps a bit, but it's expensive. So that's the funny thing. The class ones are so bad that even the class one military, it's it's kind of just okayish compared to conventional drives. Like <laughs> the class three and the class four conventional actually outperform the class one military, and that's embarrassing. Although, with that said, the class 2 and 3 military, they really are in a class of their own. They're way out here in the 50s, where everything else, like, the best they can do is the 30s, and it's more like 20s. So, uh, back to Firefox. So what do we learn from this? Well, Piper's based drives so want to be medium-sized. Um, there's, there's kind of a sweet spot there uh, for ships like the Asp, and I guess the transporter, and the lion, and the tiger. Those are like heavy fighters in the case of the asp, or light traders for the others. Uh, there is a bit of a problem though, which is that most of those ships are awful clunkers. Like uh, the, uh, There will be a ship guide later, but suffice to say, I'm not a fan of the transporter or lion. I think there's really only one ship that I like that fits a class four, which would be the tiger. Still, that's a very nice option. And yeah, basic class one drive, it's bad. It's so bad. It's, it's the worst thing, it's the worst drive in the game by this efficiency measure. And uh, that's really sad because that screws the new players. Like, like when you start, you have almost no choice but to use this drive. And it's bad. It's, it eats up way too much of your ship's hull. And of course, the other problem with small ships is that they're very inefficient when it comes to certain essentials like you know, autopilot, radar mapper, possibly even atmospheric shielding. Uh, these may be essential systems, but they take up a ton each. And they take up a ton in the Eagle Mark I, which has 20 tons of space. And they take up a ton each in the Panther Clipper, which has like uh, 2,000 tons of space. So, so again, small ships are getting screwed here. Yeah, even the military class one drive, I wouldn't call it good. It's it's okay. It's on par with a uh, class two and class class five drives. Although the really good stuff is the military class two and three, like, and that's what I have right now. I have a Cobra three, which can reasonably fit a class three military drive. I have about, if you just fit that drive and it's fuel, you have about 50 tons left for trading and stuff, which is great. And my Cobra 3 has a ridiculous range of 18 light years. Funny thing, this is almost fixed in the sequel, uh, Frontier First Encounters. Um, they changed the hyperspace constant. Yeah, you can change the laws of physics if you're a game programmer. Change it to 300. 
and that has a lot of implications. Perhaps the most obvious one, uh, the purple ship problem just goes away. Because, you know, purple ships that would have a very bad range for the class 1, like 6.66, suddenly found they have a range of 10, uh, which is great. Yeah, and that's because it makes the drives that I consider crap uh, good, like you know, multiply by 1.5, then both the class 1 and the class 7, which uh, I'm really not impressed by the inefficiency of, they suddenly jump up to where they'd be competitive in, uh, in Frontier. Of course, the good drives also get bumped up, which means they become like amazingly good. So the class, uh, class 3 and class 4 drives suddenly become as efficient as the old class 2 military. And, and yeah, the military drives themselves become absolutely insane. Like, uh, 81 would be the theoretical jump range in this new game of a class 3 drive with a, with a full load of fuel in a ship that just barely fits it. I think, uh, again, you've got the problem of the hull. The, the actual example, the Gecko, would only be able to jump 60 light years. Yeah, only 60. <laughs> Big enough to jump from uh, Sol to Achenar, I think. <laughs> and yeah, even the Cobra Mark III with the Class 3 setup, 27 light year range. Absolutely insane. Well, perhaps not quite as insane as the Asp, which can fit a conventional drive, have a 32 light year range, and then have enough space to fit fuel scoops, which can collect extra fuel from uh, gas giants and even stars. So you can go out exploring space in that ship, and you can jump 32 light years at a time. I mean, there may not be a lot to do once you get outside. Once you get uh, you know, about 100 light years from Sol, there really isn't much there. Just endlessly procedural generated uh, empty systems, mostly. But you can. So yeah, I mean, will I be playing Frontier First Encounters? Probably not, because I do not enjoy a combat system where uh, you can get killed faster than you can turn off the autopilot. Yeah, it's a really, really rough game. And that thing alone, the fact that it made combat monstrously difficult, kind of, kind of makes up for the convenience of, you know, of increasing the hyperspace constant. So, anyway, I hope that was at least informative. Um, I mean, some of this will actually matter next time because I'm going to try attempt some assassination missions and uh, in assassination missions, uh, hyperspace speed and range really does matter. Like, you want to be able to, uh, you want to be able to follow your target through hyperspace. That's the most obvious problem. And I've seen some really obnoxious target ships like, I've seen a Tiger which weighs 400 tonnes with a class 6 military drive. I mean, that drive alone takes up 250 tonnes and then 36 tonnes for the fuel. And that gave that ship a, a kind of crazy uh, 18 light year range. Uh, that's why I'm doing this in the Cobra 3. Like, I've never seen, I haven't seen anything that can outrun the Cobra 3. Although that, that, that crazy Tiger does tie it. So yeah, when you're an, if you're an assassin, then you want a very fast ship with a very long range, because you want to be able to follow people through hyperspace, and you want to arrive before they do. So uh, you'll see my attempts at assassination next time. See ya.